Hi folks! The following video is going to give a brief overview of the idea of non-classical carbocations. The debate about whether or not these exist caused a great deal of controversy in the field of organic chemistry. An extensively studied system for these types of carbocations are known as norbornal systems. Norbornane itself is this fused ring system. Often it's drawn in the side-on view, where you have a six-membered ring, where there is a CH2 group bridging carbons that are opposite the ring. Viewed from the top down, this would look like a six-membered ring with a wedge CH2 bridge. In the late 1940s, Saul Winstein, a really famous organic chemist, was studying these norbornane derivatives where there is a leaving group present on one of the carbons. In this case, the leaving group is called an OBS group, brosylate, which is similar to tosylate, which is more typically seen these days, but it's a sulfonate where there is a para-bromo group present on an aromatic ring. In the tosylate you see more regularly, this is replaced with a methyl group. This particular geometry in which the leaving group points up and the CH2 bridge points up as well is known as the exogeometry. Winstein looked at solvolysis reactions, which proceed by an SN1 mechanism. In this reaction, the acetate replaces the leaving group to generate this substitution product. Intriguingly, this reaction was observed to proceed with retention of stereochemistry. So in the product, the acetate group is exo as well. Winstein also performed the same type of reactions, starting with the endo starting material, where relative to the CH2 bridge, the leaving group points down and away from that bridging group. Interestingly, starting with the endo starting material gives the same product as you got in the exo case. So here, an inversion of stereochemistry has occurred in the substitution reaction. So there's clearly something interesting going on here. And even more puzzlingly, the first reaction, starting with the exo starting material, proceeds 350 times faster than starting with the endo starting material. So all of this evidence is suggesting that this is not your typical SN2 or SN1 mechanism. In the famous 1949 paper, Winstein proposed that a typical carbocation is not formed. So you don't simply have a loss of leaving group to generate a free carbocation at this position. What he proposed is that delocalized bonding was present in a strange intermediate instead. So rather than drawing a typical carbocation, Winstein proposed there's an intermediate with two partial carbon-carbon bonds that I'm drawing with dotted lines here, and that the positive charge is delocalized. Using this unusual carbocation, he rationalized that the nucleophile could come in from two different directions. It's favorable for the nucleophile to come in from the upper right, avoiding the partial bonds on the left side of the molecule. And this would lead to the exo product, where the nucleophile has added pointing up. And you would assume that if there's a partial bond present here, the electron density on this side of the molecule would be blocking the approach of the nucleophile from below. And since the nucleophile doesn't add from below, that is why you don't observe the endo product. So a very complicated proposal, but a short paper. This paper was one page long, and it proved to be fairly controversial. A chemist that was particularly loud in disagreeing with Winstein's proposal was Herbert C. Brown. This is another famous organic chemist that's best known for his work on hydroboration reactions. For these, he won a Nobel Prize. So Winstein had proposed that upon loss of leaving group, 
there was a single carbocation structure with sort of delocalized bonding of sigma bonds, and he called this a non-classical cation. Brown disagreed with this assessment and instead thought that more typical carbocation structures would be adequate to explain this reaction. He assumed that where the leaving group departed would become the carbocation initially, and then a carbocation rearrangement could take place. So taking this neighboring carbon-carbon bond and bringing those electrons to the carbocation. This rearrangement is forming a new carbon-carbon bond, and the central carbon is being deprived of electrons, so that is where the new carbocation would reside. So what the difference between these two organic chemists were proposing was in one case a single carbocation with partial bonds that is non-classical, and on the other hand we have a more typical or classical scenario where carbocation rearrangement causes a rapid equilibrium between two structures instead. So if we looked at the difference in opinions on reaction coordinate diagrams, let's first consider Brown's perspective. That classical carbocations are created, and then they undergo rearrangement quickly. Here I've drawn the norbornal starting material, and I'm putting the substitution product slightly lower in energy, just assuming that this reaction is slightly exergonic, because it does occur. A loss of a leaving group step would generate the initial carbocation, and Brown's proposal is that this carbocation is discrete and can undergo a low energy barrier interconversion or rearrangement to another carbocation. Nucleophilic attack of the carbocation by the acetate nucleophile would get to the final product. So once the carbocation has been generated, there are two forms of it that differ by a rearrangement reaction. And at the transition state for this rearrangement, where I'm taking the electrons from this carbon-carbon bond and bringing them to the carbocation, you would have partial bonds between this front left carbon and the central carbon, and between the same carbon and the right carbon. To consider Winstein's original proposal, we should consider the same starting material and substitution product. The only difference is in the carbocation intermediate in between. So Winstein's proposal is that there is a single carbocation intermediate that is non-classical, meaning it has partial bonds even though it's an intermediate instead of a transition state. So being an intermediate, it's a local minimum along the reaction coordinate, so there is a rate-determining step or the loss of leaving group to generate that carbocation, and then there's a lower barrier for the substitution or nucleophilic attack to occur. So the crux of the debate is, is this structure where there are partial bonds in the carbocation present a transition state or is it an intermediate? And this debate raged on for decades. As part of the evidence for this carbocation, a lot of NMR studies were undertaken, and these studies ultimately suggested that the non-classical carbocation is an intermediate instead of a transition state, as Winstein originally proposed. A third chemist became heavily involved in the debate, known as George Ola. He's another Nobel laureate that received the prize for studying carbocations in particular, and his research group performed many of the famous NMR studies. So here are the two structures we're comparing again. We've got a non-classical carbocation, where it's one structure with two partial bonds, where the positive charge is delocalized, compared to one carbocation present at a single site that could undergo a rearrangement to generate a second carbocation. So the non-classical versus the classical view of this particular carbocation.
In order to think about what the NMR spectra would look like for these two different compounds, I want to focus on two carbons in particular, which I'm labeling carbon 1 and 2 in each structure. In the structure on the right, carbon 2 is a carbocation, and carbon 1 is not a carbocation, so they are clearly distinct. In the other structure, carbon 1 is attached to a CH2 bridge attached to a carbon that's tertiary. Carbon 2 is also connected to a CH2 bridge connected to the same tertiary carbon. And both carbons 1 and carbon 2 are partially bound to this other carbon on the left. So even though it's a little bit hard to see it in the drawing of the molecule as it is here, these carbons, carbon 1 and 2, are equivalent, meaning they should give rise to a single carbon NMR signal, whereas in the classical carbocation, one of these carbons is the carbocation, one is its neighbor, and they should be chemically inequivalent by carbon NMR. What's observed is that carbons 1 and 2 are equivalent, even at really low temperatures, like minus 160 degrees Celsius, in carbon-13 NMR spectra, so they give rise to a single signal, and this has been interpreted to support the fact that a non-classical carbocation is the intermediate and not a transition state. So takeaways from this video, I want you to know about the existence of non-classical carbocations, where you have delocalized partial bonds and positive charge spread over multiple locations. Although we see this most commonly in transition states, in certain rare carbocations, these are ground states or intermediates rather than high points along the reaction coordinate. It's very difficult to predict what structures will be non-classical carbocations, and organic chemists use tools of spectroscopy in order to study them and prove their non-classical nature. That's it for this video. I'll see you in class.